Hey guys, Sock here from Sock e Chicken. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing top 10 features of Samsung One UI 3.0 with Android 11. Now, a bunch of people have already messaged me and they let me know this morning that they are in fact getting the stable version of One UI 3.0 with Android 11 on their phones. So it is in fact the best time to share top 10 features. So you get acquainted with this One UI 3.0 awesomeness. So let's dive in and get started right away. Now, if you're wondering whether or not your phone is getting One UI 3.0, there's gonna be a link down below. You click the link, it's gonna take you to my website. And here is the list of all the eligible Samsung smartphones. I'm talking about the S line, the Note line, the A line, and the M line smartphones. So if you scroll down here, you can check to see if your phone is on the list. This is for all the S phones, Note phones, Z phones. And if you keep scrolling down, you got the A line phones. For example, the A51 and the A71 are going to be getting this update. I will be updating this tracker regularly, so just keep an eye on for that. But regardless, let's dive into the actual features. So you can see that we have One UI 3.0 Android 11. If I tap this a couple times, it brings up that little wheel. And I can go like this, okay, several times. And on the third time, I get that number 11 and a little cat smiley. Now, I do want to share a quick bonus tip with you guys that is brand new. It is hidden on the One UI 3.0. So if I go to my settings, if I go all the way down, if I enable my developer options, let me go inside. What you can do is if you scroll down just a little bit, there's a brand new option here that says show screen refresh rate. When I click on it, I actually get to see the refresh rate on the screen right over here okay so look at that as 120 hertz refresh rate of course this is a s20 ultra now if i go to the settings for example and if i go to display and if i go to motion smoothness if i go to standard if i tap on apply you'll see that we only have 60 hertz because that's the normal refresh rate so I thought that was a really nice and cool feature. This is an Android 11 feature. So by the way, if you want to enable your developer options, all you do is you go in here about phone and then you go to your software information and you and you tap on this build number seven times and that's going to enable uh, the developer's options, which are right here at the bottom. Then you can enable this feature. So again, a quick bonus feature that you've probably never seen before on any other website. But here you have it. First, let's start off with an actual hidden feature. Now, this feature has to do with your YouTube application, your picture in picture viewing. So let me launch YouTube real quick. And then I'm gonna launch a quick video right from here, okay? Now, when I go outside of this video, goes down into a little picture in picture window. Now, this window has been for a long time, very small, okay? Now, what you can do with One UI 3.0, you can actually resize it just a little bit. So when you're doing something else, you can now have access to a larger screen. That's fantastic. So again, let's do that one more time. You go out, it's tiny, okay, you're doing something else. You still wanna watch the video. So you just grab the corner, the edge, and you just make it a little bit bigger and it becomes bigger so much better. And of course, you can always grab the window and just throw it away, all right? Let's move on to the next tactic. Now, one more thing I noticed is if I go to my clock application, all right, clock application, let's say I set up a timer. Let's go over here. Overall look is the same. But if I set up a timer, let's do it for four seconds. And I'm just going to turn off the phone. We now have a brand new reminder screen. As you can see, it looks much different than what we had before. So this one is, uh, in fact, a much cleaner look. And as you can see, we also have a player on the outside. All right, now let's move on and talk about the next thing I wanna talk about. Now, one more new option we have is when I press and hold on any icon, if that icon has any corresponding widgets, they're gonna show up right here on the corner. And what I can do is I can tap on that, okay? I can tap on it and it actually allows me to pick the widget that I want based on that application and just dump it onto the home screen as you just saw. Okay, so whether application has a widget, it's gonna show up at the, at the, at the corner here. Uh, the phone application does not have a widget, so it's not gonna show up here. Now if I go to any other application, let's just go for one that I know has uh, widgets, right here, Netflix. If I tap it, it's got that option. You can tap on that widgets icon, access all the widgets 
dump them onto the screen on the fly. Instead of having to pinch the screen, okay, go to the widgets and actually search for it. Just press and hold, boom, boom, you're done. And of course, one of my all time favorite features from other phones is finally here. Double tap to lock the phone. Fantastic. Double tap to wake it up, double tap to lock it down. All right, I mean, make it sleep. Now you go to your settings, go into your advanced features, and then you scroll down to motions and gestures, and you enable or disable that option from here. Double tap to sleep, and of course we already had these two options, but that's brand new, fantastic, all right? Top feature. Now one of the best features that's on this uh, One UI 3.0 is in the phone application. So you'd go to your phone application, you tap on this one here, you go to your settings and you have the call background option. You tap on it and you can put a brand new background in all your actual calls. First, you can tap and change the layout. You can have it centered or you can have it broken down into two sides. So that's fine. And then you can choose a background. You can have a video background, you can have a still background, or you can go into your gallery and pick any background that you want. So let's go over here and pick a nice one. All right, so here's one uh, for the outdoors. So I'm gonna tap on this one, okay? So that can be my background image when somebody gives me a call. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm gonna tap on call background apply, okay? And now I'm gonna call myself from the other phone. Let's do that right now, all right? Absolutely, absolutely fantastic little tactic. All right, let me turn that off. All right, let's move on to the next top feature. Now, the next feature comes in the form of bubbles. Now, when I go into my notifications uh, settings screen, so it's going to be right here. That's the notifications. You tap on it, okay? Now, when you go down just a little bit and go into advanced settings, you tap on it, and what you can do is you can pick the floating icons option, you can go from bubbles or you can go to Samsung's own smart pop-up view, but the bubbles is brand new Android 11 feature that is now in here as well. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna send myself a text message, okay? So I'm gonna say hi to myself, just send a text message. So I just got a brand new message and what I can do is it says here, you can open the conversations as bubbles from the quick panel. So I'm gonna pull down the quick panel, okay? And there's that text message right here. I can expand it just a little bit, and then you see a little icon right here, okay? It looks like a window icon. When I tap it, it expands the conversation in a bubble view, just like Windows Messenger. So when I tap on this one, it can be minimized. This is just a regular text message, and I can put it anywhere on the screen as I want. When I wanna continue a conversation, just tap on it, and it's right there, and I send this away. So that's fantastic. Again, just to be clear, you go to your settings, notifications, advanced settings, okay? And again, floating icons, this is an existing feature. Bubbles is the Android 11 feature that allows you to have a messenger-like, Facebook messenger-like bubbles on your phone. Let's move on. So let me launch my music application, Google Play Music. I'm gonna play a quick music over here. Let's play this one, okay? Now I'm gonna go down here and then I'm gonna pull down my panel and you can see that we now have on the top above all the other notifications, a beautiful little music controller, okay? And I can go to the next song right from here, as you can see. Uh, well, it's not going to the next song, but I can go to the next song if I had more songs in that album. But then on top of that, I can pause, go next, go back, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever, and I can tap on this icon here that allows me the option to connect any other Bluetooth device that I have, that I have in the vicinity to whom I have connected before or whatever. They're gonna be listed right here. If they're active, it's gonna say connected. You tap on it, it goes right into whatever you wanna to connect to, such as your Galaxy Buds. But right now, it is connected to your actual phone as you can see. Now we also have some brand new privacy security feature. If I go into my settings, and if I uh, scroll down over to the uh, privacy, which should be here, right here, on the top we have a brand new menu 
known as the permission manager. Now, when I tap this guy, it gives me a breakdown of all the applications that are using permissions to certain applications. So for example, let's see how many applications have access to my camera. I tap it and I get a full list. So all these applications here have access to my camera. So what I can do if I don't want one of these applications for privacy reasons not to have access to the camera, I would tap on it, I would say deny, and now that application does not have access to my camera. The same thing goes you can do for microphone, 21 applications have access to my microphone. That's crazy. I can go in here, for example, to Chrome. I don't know why it has access. I just deny it, okay? So Chrome cannot use the microphone on my phone. So you can do this with all these options. As you can see, phone, location, all these applications have access to my location. That's just crazy. I can disable on the go as I desire. All right, so that is the new permissions manager. Now, one more really cool thing that we have is if I go to my settings, and if I go into my notifications, all right, what you can do is you can scroll down, go into your advanced settings, and from here, you can access all your notification history all day long, okay? So if you miss something, you can come back here, this is the recently dismissed notifications, and that's the last 24 hour notifications. They're all categorized, so if you want to expand them, you just tap on it and you'll see what happened for that notification. So this area catches all notifications all day and it serves it to you in case you need to go in there and see if you missed something important. So that is absolutely fantastic. We now have even more dynamic wallpaper options. So if I pinch the screen, okay, if I go to my wallpapers and if I go to wallpaper services and if I go to my dynamic lock screen wallpapers, if I tap on settings, we, know ha we now have many more categories. We have the special category, the art category, the food, before we only had five. Now I'll let you know that you can actually enable five of these at the same time. So dynamic wallpapers basically is this. Uh, let me just double tap here to turn off the screen. Double tap again to turn it on. Now these are the live wallpapers. Every time I turn off the screen and turn it on again at the lock screen, I get a new wallpaper. That's the dynamic lock screen wallpapers. And now we have more categories and you can select up to five combinations, okay, that feed you random wallpapers from all these various categories, art, special, food, desserts, landscapes, whatever. So that's new as well, and that's great. If I go to an older UI version, you'll see that we only have five categories, and of course the screen looks a little bit different as you can see, all right? Now one more thing I noticed was when you go into your settings, you go into connections, and then when you go into your Wi-Fi, let's say you go to Wi-Fi that you have connected to, uh, if you tap on the settings, we do have a new look over here on the top, it gives you the network speed, the security that they're using, and the IP address of this device right here, okay? So that's a new look in the Wi-Fi screen. One more thing that's very important with the notifications panel is if I, when I pull this down, you will notice that everything is compartmentalized. So we have our conversations in a separate uh, little section. We have our alerting notifications here, and then we also have our silent notifications on the top here. And of course, you can go inside and you can expand whatever that you want and perform activities on it. But I like the new broken down look. Everything sits in its own category where it makes sense. So things are not cluttered and clustered all over the place. All right. All right. So that brings us to the end of this video. And this I want to look at the top 10 features and a bunch of hidden features for One UI 3.0 with Android 11. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. And for now guys, have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button, and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.